Hi, this is a brief exercise in learning how to use color and basic shapes to take ordinary objects and make them look a little more spectacular in Adobe Flash, and I'm using CS4 for this one. Uh, we're going to draw four of these spheres in various stages in between, and to get started I'm just going to wipe everything out and start right from the very basics. Okay, step one. Uh, we're going to use a sphere, naturally, a oval tool, and if you don't find it immediately, sometimes it's hidden under the rectangle tool and you have to click and hold to choose the right shape and notice that you have other shapes you can use as well. And then choose a color. Your favorite color from the swatches is a good place to get started. But the first thing I'm going to suggest to you is let's get a little picky about the color. Instead of choosing it straight out of the swatches here, there is an option to open up the color palette and choose something that's a little bit more, um, a little more uh, believable, I guess is the word. Um, the colors they usually default to are very saturated at the top of this scale. So I'm going to choose something that's a little more desaturated, halfway down, sometimes even two-thirds of the way down. That's the saturation. Side to side is the hue, what part of the rainbow you want. And the last choice we have here is the, is the lightness or tone. So I'm going to take this up a little bit so it's lighter. It's still green, but it's not quite as saturated. Okay, doke. So for now I'm going to start there. And by the way, you can also get to those controls using this color palette up top here, if you can find it. So I'm going to start by drawing the sphere, and before I start drawing, I'm going to pay attention to this switch right here. If I'm in object drawing mode and I draw a sphere, I'm holding the shift key down to make it a perfect circle, by the way, it puts a bounding box around it and it builds it into a group right away. If you're starting just some basic drawing, you may want to turn that object drawing off for now. There's a time for it, but right now when you draw it like this, instead of putting a bounding box, it now draws it, and you can click and change and alter some of the things that are going on. One more trick that we have here. Right now I'm drawing it green with absolutely no stroke. Well, let's make this thing have a little stroke as well. A stroke is the line around the outside of it. And if we draw it now, I hope, we'll get a sphere that looks a little bit more like a pool ball. It has a fine stroke around the outside. Selecting this, I can double click it. And if I wanted to make that stroke a little more pronounced, I can go over to the Properties palette and increase it a little bit just to make it look a little more cartoony for now. Something like that. Okay, doke. So there's our first basic sphere. I'm going to double click that. I'm going to group it together for now. And I'm going to use Control D to duplicate it. And I'm going to try another variation on this. Now, when we group it, it's like it's been sealed into a Ziploc bag or something. We want to unpackage it so we can manipulate it to, to, un, to break it apart or to ungroup it. Uh, we can right mouse click and look for the words break apart. You could also go up to the word modify and try ungrouping it too. But now we can manipulate the, um, the tones and the fills and the strokes here a little bit. And I'm going to start by using this line tool. Again, I do not want that object drawing to be toggled on because it won't work properly. If I don't have it on when I draw a line, the line is destructive, the stroke that I've just drawn, and it interferes with the fill that's in there. It actually carves the fill in half and it actually segments the strokes as well. But it also means that I can manipulate this line a little bit. I can hit the delete key when I select the outside edges, and I can hover over the line and actually bend it. So what I'm doing is creating something that has sort of an illustrated dimension to it, a 3D sphere rather than just a circle. And to make this thing look a little more convincing, I'm going to manipulate the tones as well. I'll select the underside of the sphere and go up to my color palette, and now I'm going to start messing around with that tone a little bit. Now be careful when you open up the palette. Right now mine is going to alter the stroke color. Make sure you know if you're manipulating the stroke or the fill. Right now I want to manipulate the fill and just make that one a little bit darker. And maybe this one here, I'd like to make it a little bit lighter. And the nice thing about this is I can select that stroke and delete it, and it leaves the fill intact, but it does carve it into two distinct sides, so they behave as two different objects. Uh, something that makes this look a whole lot better is not just a light and a dark side of this object, it's also shadows and highlights. So I'm going to put a drop shadow to this. A drop shadow I'm going to do very simply. I'm going to choose another circle. I'm going to choose to have no stroke because shadows shouldn't have strokes. And all I did was uh, check the, uh, the, the stroke color and take it to that little toggle the stroke color off. And now I'm going to go choose a color. And the color I'm going to choose is going to be black. And the special thing about this black color is I don't want it to be a solid black. I'm going to make it a transparent black by dragging down the alpha to about, let's take it to about 35% or so, I can now drag a black oval that'll act as a shadow. Now it looks like it's gray. It's actually 
uh, black but transparent, but it's not working right just yet because when I draw fill over top of fill, it blots out the old fill underneath. It's destructive. I'm going to undo that. Before I draw that fill, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to group this thing together. Take all the stroke and all the fill that I just created, modify and group together, and I'll remember Control G in the future. When you group an item, it sort of supersedes any fill or stroke that you draw on top of it. That fill or stroke will be drawn actually underneath it, because the group's more important than the fill, and we get ourselves a little drop shadow, just like that. Now I'm going to do the opposite now. I'm going to actually draw the um, draw the highlights using white. I'd like it to be totally solid white though, so I'll take its alpha all the way back up to 100%. And when I draw this one, I want that that uh, highlight to be on top of the sphere. If I just drew it right now, it's kind of the opposite. Remember when I drew just a simple fill, it went to the bottom? Same thing's going to happen here. I can try to draw it, but it disappears. It's actually still there. If I went into outline mode up in my layer, I can see that the object is actually there. It's just underneath the group. And I could you know, move the group if I had to, just to prove that it's there. It's underneath there. There it is right there. But I would like to be a little bit better about this than this. I'm going to step back a few before I had them. Before I drew it. There it is. Okay, so I'm back to before I drew that little thing. I'm going to draw that circle, but I'm going to make sure that I do use object drawing because I want it to be separate, detached, and on top of the other group that I have here. This is still grouped, but when I draw this, a new group supersedes older groups. So I have a group that is the highlight, I have a group that is the sphere, and I have a straight fill that is the shadow. Hopefully you're getting the idea. Put a couple of those things up there and I've got a nice illustrated sphere, a nice pool ball or marble. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one here and try to make this a little bit more interesting. And um, actually, maybe what I'll do is this. I think I'll destroy this. I'm going to turn all of these items into a group with Control G. And it keeps them in their same hierarchy. I now have a group within the bigger group. I have groups on top of groups and all that. It's kind of like baggies within baggies. But the whole thing now behaves as one unit. So when I duplicate it, I can move it on down there. Looks good. My next step is I'm going to try using something other than solid colors. I'm going to try playing with gradients for the colors. So um, let's see, to repair this and turn it into one item again, I'm going to repair it by using the sample tool. If I use that eyedropper tool, I've selected the lighter color of green. If I now sample with the eyedropper tool the darker color, it paints the lighter color the same as the uh, darker color. And the interesting thing there is it now heals it and turns it all into one continuous solid color again. So now I can go and manipulate it with the palette. And here's the thing I'm going to do. Uh, I'll show you what some people do. They really like this for some reason. There are gradient colors here that are mixes between uh, one color and another. And I find this is one that gets used a lot, this kind of glowy, greeny, orby looking thing. Uh, but it's not terribly realistic. We can make it a little bit more realistic if we use the paint bucket and change its highlighted area. But you'll notice when we did this, it just made it look like it's all solid. Here's the problem with the paint bucket. Sometimes there is an option here called lock fill. And you'll want to turn that off before you try the paint bucket trick. But now you get it so it does look kind of 3D. Not bad. Only thing is, it's back to those non-believable colors again. We've got very saturated green here. So it looks shiny and all, but I don't think it's looking very realistic. I'm going to double click until I can get right to that fill. Go to the palette. And I'm going to start manipulating these colors a little bit. I'm going to take, for instance, this color, and instead of it being that super saturated green, I'm going to try dulling it down a little bit so it's not quite so bright. And this black here, instead of it being solid black, like really, really dark, I'm going to double click it. I'm going to sample the color from the left side so it's all uniform, but I'm just going to make it a darker version of that color. Not black, just darker version. So there it is. And I'll click outside of here. Double click all the way back to the scene. You can also just click on the scene navigation. And so instead of having an illustrated cartoony looking thing, we now have sort of a 3D looking thing with that nice, with those nice effects. Same highlights and stuff, but now we've controlled the color. So now we're going to take this to the last stage. I'll duplicate this. And for the last stage, I'm going to try to make something that looks way less cartoony. We still have stroke. We have solid shadows and things. We can make things look a whole lot more believable 
if we try playing with a couple of things. Number one, I'll tell you what, I'm going to break this apart because I want to manipulate the individual bits, like the shadow. This shadow here is not terribly believable. It's sort of uniform. We can make something that looks a little more interesting if we just go make ourselves a custom gradient shadow. And I'll show you how to do that right now. I am going to go just draw a circle, perfect circle. This is going to become the shadow eventually. Oh, I had the toggle on here for object drawing, so I guess I have to right mouse click and break it apart so I can manipulate it. And I'll go into the palette. And what I'd like to do now is create a shadow that uses that alpha. And a shadow is just basically black with different alpha values. The inside of the shadow, close to the, same, to the center, same as what was before. I'll take it down to about, I think it was 35 that we used last time. So I'll take it there. That's good. This side, I would like this side to actually be 0% alpha. Black. I'll make it black again. So although it looks like it's white here, it's not. It's actually 0% black, like that. And to make this shadow look, well, I'll click outside of it just to see what it looks like. It's a nice smooth gradient from 35% you know, black to 0% black. We can make it look a little more shadow-like if we say, okay, let's push this left color, the inside color, outward a little bit. So it's mostly that 35%, and it's just on the fringe that it's going to fade away to a 0%. If we look at it there, looking a little more shadow-like. And finally, I'm going to use the Transform tool, grab this object, and make it, shape it a little bit more like those other shadows were. If I could make it exactly the same size as what I had up there before, it would be nice and consistent. But as it is right now, what we get is sort of a shady shadow. And it's much more the way shadows actually behave. It makes sense that the shadow, I'll tap the arrow keys to move it, leans a little heavily to the left-hand side because it looks like the light source is on the right, so I'll have it kind of go that direction. So we're already getting much more believable, but there's one last trick that'll make this thing look even more spectacular, and it's just, again, more circles and gradients. It goes like this. I'm going to draw a circle over top of it, and I'll group this circle because I don't want it to interfere. If I just did something like this, it might interfere with what's underneath, oh, but I do have object drawing mode on, so this is good. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'll zoom in on this so we can really see what's going on. I'm going to create um, a reflected glossy circle on top and a reflected shadowy circle on the bottom. And although it, it's kind of hard to describe, you'll see these things on buttons and icons and graphics all over the place, and it's kind of a nice trick. So with it in object drawing mode, taking a circle, doesn't matter what I'm starting with, I'm going to man manipulate the gradients later on. I'm just going to draw a circle roughly half the height and symmetrical on top of that sphere. And it can, I can use that transform tool so I can make it just a little taller so it sort of matches the edge a little bit. And then I'll go in there and start manipulating it. So I'm going to double click on the group so I can start playing around with it. And I'm going to manipulate it so this is going to be a white shadow if you want. If I double-click this thing, oh, one more thing. I'm not going to use radial. I'm going to use a linear gradient. Radial, gra radial gradient starts in the center and sort of spans out. Linear just goes in one direction, from top to bottom or left to right. So uh, if I use those same little, little uh, colors that I have here, I'm going to actually take the left side all the way over there. By the way, if you click and add an extra crayon like this accidentally, you can always wriggle them and pull them down to delete them. You only want to have two colors in a gradient, at least at this stage. So this color on the left, I'm going to make it pure white, and I'm going to make it 40%. And this color on the right, I'm going to make it pure white, and I'm going to make it 0%. And when I let go of this, it's going from left to right. I really want it to go from top to bottom, so I have to change the orientation of the, of the gradient. And you can do that with a paint bucket still storing our color, our customized gradient. If we start at the top, click and drag straight down and hold the shift key to make it go perfectly straight, we get a gradient that goes from that 40% white to 0% white. And when we stand back and look at it, it looks like that. And we have ourselves a gloss at the top. I'm going to do the exact same thing at the bottom. And if I want to do this really quickly, I could actually just duplicate this object, move it down, I'm going to flip it horizontal or vertically. I'm going to go modify, transform, and flip vertical so it 
spins it around, makes it a little bit easier to manipulate. This one I want to make into more of a shadow, so double click it, choose it, go back to my colors, and I would like this one to go from dark, maybe not 40, I'll well, try 40%, see what it does. And this one, although it's transparent, it's still a good idea to take it to the kind of tone that you want. I would like this to be a shadow that fades to zero. I don't want it to shade to fade from uh, dark to or black to white to transparent. So I'm making sure it matches the tone. I'm clicking on it there. Hmm. One other thing I can see about this, I think I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. And of course, it's got to be symmetrical. So. So it's kind of a reflection of the shadow that's underneath there right now. As we stand back and take a look at this, you can see the results. There are our four stages. Whoop. Four stages of sphere illustration. And uh, they're all equally good. You know, sometimes you just want to have a circle. Sometimes you want to have an illustration. Sometimes you want to use a gradient. Sometimes you really want to pull out all the stops and make things look like they're really glossy and more believable. I leave it to you. See what you can do with it. Good luck. Have fun.